NASA just issued a chilling warning that could affect millions. A massive solar storm, a literal tsunami of energy, is hurtling towards Earth, and it's aimed directly at the United States. 18 states are now in the direct path of a potential blackout that could last for weeks, if not months. This isn't just about the lights going out. This is about everything that depends on them. Communication, water, and supply chains. But the thing nobody is telling you is that the power outage is only the beginning. The real threat is what happens in the minutes and hours after the grid goes down. The storm that will end everything. Right now, as you're watching this, something incredible and terrifying is happening 93 million miles away. A region on the sun, a tangled knot of magnetic fields called AR3882, has just unleashed a colossal explosion. Think of it like a cannon the size of a planet, and it just fired directly at Earth. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory caught the whole thing, and the data sent scientists scrambling. What they saw was an X-class solar flare, the most powerful category possible, erupting with the force of billions of nuclear weapons. But the flare itself isn't the real problem. The thing nobody tells you is that this explosion hurled a cloud of magnetized plasma, a coronal mass ejection or CME, into space. This isn't some tiny solar burp. We're talking about a cloud of particles weighing billions of tons screaming through the void at a mind-boggling 3.1 million miles per hour. At that speed, it will cross the vast distance between the Sun and Earth in just a matter of days. And when it gets here, it's going to slam into our planet's magnetic field. This collision creates what's known as a geomagnetic storm. Normally, these are weak and just give us pretty auroras, the northern lights. But this one? This is different. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Space Weather Prediction Center has rated this a G4, or severe, geomagnetic storm watch. That's the second highest level there is. So what does that mean for you? Get this. It means chaos for our power grid. The massive influx of energy from the sun can induce powerful electrical currents in long conductors on the ground. And what are the longest conductors we have? the high-voltage transmission lines that make up our electrical grid. This isn't a guess, it's a certainty. NASA and NOAA have run the models, and they've identified a corridor of 18 states that are at the highest risk for catastrophic power outages. These states are primarily in the northern tier of the country, where the magnetic field lines dip down and offer less protection. The list is a roll call of the American Heartland and Industrial Centers. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Montana. For the tens of millions of people living there, life could be about to change drastically. We're not talking about a few hours without Netflix. We're talking about the potential for widespread, long-duration blackouts. The induced currents from the solar storm can flow into electrical transformers, the giant workhorses of the grid, and literally fry them from the inside out. These aren't something you can just pick up at the hardware store. Some of these transformers are the size of a small house, weigh hundreds of thousands of pounds, and take months, if not years, to build and replace. You see, our modern world is a delicate house of cards, built on a foundation of electricity. Take that away, and it all comes tumbling down. But not all things are what they seem, because the immediate blackout is just the first domino to fall. The real danger is how long the power could stay out, and that's a number no one wants to say out loud. History's Ominous Echo Many people are crazy about prepping for disasters, but most of them are preparing for the wrong thing. They're thinking about earthquakes or floods, local events. But what's coming is a global phenomenon. And believe it or not, we have a terrifying historical blueprint for exactly what's about to happen. We have to go back in time, 
to a world lit by gaslight and powered by steam. The year was 1859. On the 1st of September, an English astronomer named Richard Carrington was sketching sunspots when he witnessed something no human had ever recorded before. A brilliant flash of white light erupting from the sun's surface. Just 17 hours later, the fastest CME ever recorded slammed into Earth. The result was pure, unadulterated chaos. The planet's magnetic field was crushed, and the night sky erupted in light. The auroras were so bright that people in the Rocky Mountains woke up in the middle of the night, thinking it was dawn. Newspapers reported you could read by the light of the aurora as far south as the Caribbean. It was a beautiful and awe-inspiring spectacle, but for the most advanced technology of the day, the telegraph system, it was an apocalypse. This is where things get scary. The geomagnetic storm induced enormous electrical currents in the telegraph wires that crisscrossed the globe. Telegraph pylons threw sparks, and the paper in telegraph offices spontaneously caught fire. Some operators reported getting powerful electrical shocks directly from their equipment. But here's the kicker, the part that should send a chill down your spine. In several documented cases, operators disconnected their batteries and the telegraph machines kept running, powered solely by the electricity from the sky. The auroral currents alone were enough to send messages. Think about that for a second. An event so powerful, it turned the planet's entire atmosphere into a giant battery. The Carrington event, as it came to be known, was the largest solar storm in at least 500 years. Now, ask yourself a simple question. In 1859, the most damage it could do was disrupt a few thousand miles of telegraph wire. What would a storm of that magnitude do to our world today? A world with not just a few wires, but with billions of electronic devices, continent-spanning power grids, and a fleet of over 2,000 critical satellites orbiting the planet. The thing nobody tells you is that a Carrington-level event today wouldn't just be inconvenient, it would be a civilization-altering event. A report from the National Academy of Sciences estimated the damage could exceed $2 trillion in the first year alone, with a full recovery taking 4 to 10 years. 18 states going dark is the best-case scenario. The worst case is something much, much darker. Our fragile system is far more vulnerable than they knew, but how could it all come crashing down so fast? the hundred ton weakness so how does a storm 93 million miles away actually turn your lights off the answer lies in the biggest most expensive and most vulnerable part of our electrical grid the high voltage transformers these are the unsung heroes of our modern life they take the incredibly high voltage electricity from power plants and step it down to a level that can be safely sent to your home there are thousands of them scattered across the country, sitting in electrical substations, humming away 24 hours a day. They are the critical joints in our nation's electrical skeleton. And they are our Achilles heel. You see, a geomagnetic storm induces something called a quasi-DC current into the AC grid. Transformers are built for AC, or alternating current. This alien DC current is like poison to them. It causes the magnetic core of the transformer to saturate, leading to extreme overheating. The internal temperature can skyrocket in a matter of minutes, literally melting the massive copper windings and destroying the unit permanently. It's like pouring molasses into the engine of a Formula One race car. The whole system just grinds to a catastrophic halt. Now, Here's the part that keeps grid engineers awake at night. These aren't just big, they're bespoke. Each one is custom built, often by foreign manufacturers, and has a lead time of 12 to 24 months. The United States does not have a large stockpile of these behemoths just sitting in a warehouse somewhere. If a severe solar storm, like the one that's on its way, were to damage or destroy hundreds of these transformers across those 18 states simultaneously, we couldn't just fix it. There would be nothing to fix it with. 
And that's when the real nightmare begins. It's called a cascading failure. When one part of the grid goes down, the load it was carrying is automatically shunted to other parts of the grid. But if those parts are already weakened or overloaded by the solar storm, they fail too. Then their load gets passed on, and so on, and so on. It can create a chain reaction that ripples across the country at the speed of light, tripping circuit breakers and plunging vast regions into darkness in a matter of minutes. This isn't a theory. It happened in 1989, when a much weaker solar storm knocked out the entire power grid of Quebec, Canada, in just 90 seconds, leaving 6 million people in the dark. The coming storm is projected to be many times stronger. The loss of power means no running water for most people, no refrigeration for food and medicine, no gas pumps, no ATMs, no credit card transactions, no internet, no cell phones. Everything stops. The complex interconnected systems that support our society are all severed at the root. They know this is our weakness, but what are the odds it could actually happen overnight without any final warning? Playing Russian roulette with the sun. So, you might be sitting there thinking, if this is so serious, why isn't it the only thing on the news? Is this really going to happen? Are we all just supposed to sit here and wait for the lights to go out? You might wonder if this is all just hype, a worst case scenario that will never come to pass. The thing is, this isn't a question of if, but when. And the science says the answer is soon. The sun goes through an 11 year cycle of activity, moving from a quiet solar minimum to a chaotic solar maximum. We are currently in solar cycle 25, and it's proving to be far more active and unpredictable than scientists originally forecasted. The sun is waking up, and it's angry. The number of powerful X-class flares is on the rise, and with each one, we are essentially playing a game of cosmic Russian roulette. Most CMEs miss the Earth, flying harmlessly off into space, but eventually, one will have our name on it, and the one racing toward us now has all the hallmarks of a major hit. But here's what you need to understand. Predicting the exact impact of a solar storm is notoriously difficult. Scientists can see the storm leave the sun, they can measure its speed and density, but knowing precisely how it will interact with our planet's magnetic field is the great unknown. It's like predicting exactly how a wave will break on the shore. You know it's coming, you know it's big, but the fine details are a mystery until the last second. This is why you don't see a panic-driven 24-7 news cycle. The authorities are in a watch-and-wait mode. But could this happen overnight? Absolutely. The final, most intense part of the geomagnetic storm arrives with the CME itself. There would be a warning, but it might only be a few hours, or even less than an hour. That's not enough time to harden the grid or take significant preventative measures on a national scale. Power companies can try to reduce the load or take sensitive equipment offline, but it's a gamble. It would be a mad scramble behind the scenes, as grid operators try to save the system from a foe they can't see or fight directly. The big question, the detail we might be missing, isn't about the science. It's about our preparedness. For decades, experts have warned Congress and utility companies about the grid's vulnerability to a major solar storm. While some small steps have been taken, the grid as a whole remains terrifyingly exposed. The systems we rely on for everything were built in an era before we truly understood the existential threat posed by our own star. We have built a technological paradise on a foundation of sand, right on the edge of a cosmic ocean that is about to send a tsunami our way. Is it possible that authorities are downplaying the true risk to avoid widespread panic? The clock is ticking and the sun doesn't care about our plans. Like this video if you learned something new, and subscribe for more answers to the questions nobody else is asking.